Good morning, folks. We've got a look at space weather now and in the past. There was a highly unusual event in Perth, and it will jump us off into a review of the magnetic pole shift. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun, bringing brightness on the incoming limb, and a small release from the southern active region. Before taking a closer look, let's peek at the solar wind, stabilizing along with geomagnetic conditions amidst this moderate coronal hole stream. The eruptive activity on the south destroyed the few sunspots that were down there. The big ones on the north are still quietly trudging along, and I will be more closely monitoring the incoming active region. Despite its smaller size, it's got numerous umbra crammed in there together. This is the confirmation study of the great solar eruptions of the 1200s. They had been previously recognized, but are now separated into three distinct major solar proton events. These were immediately preceding the Wolf Grand Solar Minimum, just like the great solar storms of the 1580s preceded the Maunder Minimum and the great solar storms of the 900s preceded the Oort Minimum. This suggests what many solar physicists have suggested for decades, that big events come before those longer minima, meaning that if the Sun is due to drop into another minimum in the next cycle or two, we've likely got major solar events coming, and ones of that level power from hundreds of years ago will not leave our electrified way of life intact when they happen again. Now folks, this story is wild. These are not light anomalies in the camera, they are not at all indicative of lightning, and they darn sure aren't signatures of dark matter as these authors have guessed. As we see one of the vertical bolts here, some notes. You can tell it's real and not a camera glitch because it wouldn't be behind the trees. That's a real beam. It's one of four detected in a matter of moments, all in less than half a second. All instantaneously appeared and then disappeared without craters, surface burn scars, and no thunder. That's why they guess macro dark matter, but even they mention major problems with that. They were clustered in time and location and have never otherwise been seen. Where would the other examples of this be? Furthermore, they lament its vertical profile, which would be quite the coincidence for any impacting particle, let alone four unique signatures in half a second. They do correctly hypothesize that the light is caused by glow mode plasma in a beam, and I will say that that's got Earth's geomagnetic L-shell lines written all over it. At the ground level, they are basically vertical. In addition to the solar flares ongoing during the sightings of those beams on Valentine's Day, the magnetic field of Earth is tossing anomalies at us left and right as it shifts. You may recall, the North Magnetic Pole has moved more, but it did have further to go. It's racing towards Siberia at this point. The South Pole is heading to meet it in the Indian Ocean, heading right past Perth and changing their geomagnetic field scenario quickly, which is a great explanation for the beams as those fields encounter new crustal fields and atmospheric conditions, and something I didn't notice before. The greater spread between the latest dots means the South Magnetic Pole is speeding up, and this marks the first time we've shared that tidbit here on YouTube. We greatly appreciate your support. To learn more about Earth's ongoing shift, which is actually a shift of the entire solar system, watch the Earth disaster documentary listed below the video in the description box. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.